an original sub-owned Clearo with a budget-friendly price. Join me for a vape as we take a look at the Inokin iSub on the Vapor Chronicles. Stay tuned. Hello everybody and welcome back to this edition of the Vapor Chronicles. Another week, another sub ohm Clearo. Surprise, surprise, nobody is surprised. If the market's booming, people are buying sub ohm tanks and everyone's trying to get a piece of the market share. And, you know, I, f I felt a little guilty. You know, I've been ragging on all these sub ohm tanks and I get that everyone's getting a little burnout with all the different sub ohm tanks and all the different coils for each of these tanks. But I must, you know, I realized yesterday, <clears throat> hopefully there never comes a time, but there might come a time when we're going to look back fondly at 2014 and 2015 and speak about the glory days of this industry where creativity and product releases were happening regularly. If you don't support our right to vape by joining CASA and also, you know, taking action in your neighborhoods and, you know, support your local brick and mortar stores and also vote things could change and uh it'll be really interesting when we look back and say remember when we used to complain about all the products coming on the market so i'm grateful uh another tank so what do we have here well this is from a company called inakin and inakin had sent me this for review it's called the iSub. uh it came with 2.5 ohm uh atomizer heads and uh it has a polycarbonate, almost like a bell cap with a non-removable drip tip. Uh, it's in the under $20 price point range. So the question is, how does it vape? How is it built? How does it work? Will this poly uh, hold up to the rigors of different juices? And I'll answer all that and more, but let's first jump to the up close, take it apart, break it down, fill it up, and then we'll come out for a vape and I'll give you my final word and analysis. All right, guys, let's zoom in. All right, so here's the outside of the package. Now it says that it's 100% stainless steel, German made PC, Japanese organic cotton, huge film, four milliliter juice capacity, full adjustable airflow, no spill coil swap. And it says that to check that your mod or battery can fire 0.5 ohm coils, the Inokin I sub tank vapes perfectly with the iTaste MVP 3.0. Thank Inokin, thank you, thank you Inokin for putting a disclaimer on here. Um, about battery safety and making sure that your device can handle that. 2.5 ohm coils included. There's a warning to keep away from children and uh, the tank's designed for juice only. Refill instructions, replacing coil instructions, and uh, that's pretty much it. So let's open this up. All right guys, so let's take a minute and uh, let's go over some specifications of the tank. The main features of the iSub is 100% stainless steel outside, German made PC, Japanese organic cotton, huge four milliliter juice capacity, fully adjustable airflow system and a no spill coil swap system. And uh, they term that phrase no spill easy swap. It's a vertical deep coil system um, that supposedly delivers huge clouds and intense flavor and extremely low price. So that's really the focus that they're they're going with this. Now, these PC outers, they kind of got a bad reputation early on. Um, and there's something in there. It might be just be a little shipping material, but they got a bad reputation early on because some of the certain juices called tank crackers, uh, certain consistencies of juice would crack PC tanks, but Supposedly, Inokin has informed me and promised me that the this is tested, retested, and there's going to be test results soon, that it's completely safe for all different types of e-juice, and it's not going to crack or uh, break down at all. They also stated that they're going to come out with a uh, different tank that will be made out of Pyrex, if you're into that, so they'll have that covered too. Now, this comes from their website, uh, four different colors. There's a clear, there's a smoke black, there's a blue, and there's like a pink pinkish purple so they look kind of nifty and uh, it's really easy to see how much juice you have in there and it just feels good I mean you know nice and nice and neat looking with this bell cap design that with no metal at the top uh, the drip tip is not removable 
so it's locked into the system, but it is a nice wide open drip tip. So this is definitely a tank for you cloud chasers, for those of you that like vapor and airflow at an affordable price. So there you have that. And the outside says I sub. And there's a little schmutz there. I'll check it in a minute. There's your bottom. And this is a fully open, you can see right through, huge airflow, huge airflow. And you can close it off and then it locks. So it's lock, open, and it's a slide. It's tight enough that it's not gonna move, but it's loose enough that it's not hard to turn. So there you have that. Now this is the interesting thing. <clears throat> to change out your coil head, if you pull this and turn the airflow off and then go counterclockwise, the base comes off. Notice how the coil head is directly in contact with your device for firing. So the coil head just goes right through the airflow base. That's all this is. So that's pretty innovative. So there's no um, you know, fluctuating resistance readings or anything like that because it reads it directly from here and it goes straight through and that's your 510 that threads on. So it's right there. Now this, the way that they designed it, it's held, and I'll, take, I'll pull this out. So to remove it, you just grab a hold here, right? And then you pull. And then it slides out. There's your coil head. says 0.5 ohm on there and we'll take a look at that in a minute and basically what you have here is let me see if I can zoom in a little bit there's a rubber o-ring in here and that's what seals the coil head so it doesn't get juice through and leak hopefully and there's your chimney inside. So let's take this off and take a look inside. So if you unscrew this, this would be what you'd do to fill. So you would just undo this. The coil head would already be locked in there. That would be separate. And then you just, you know, pour your juice right in here. So it's, you know, four milliliter juice capacity. This is threaded and uh, it looks like there's a little O-ring right here, which there is, that helps seal your tank. So there's a little tiny O-ring right along the, the rim there. But look at how wide that is, that's huge. And then to change this, I don't even know, I think that, I don't know, I don't think this comes off. I'm not gonna try because I don't wanna break it. So maybe they'll sell different uh, top portions of the tank, you know? And let's see what this is in here. There's a little something there. Yeah, it's just a little bit of a piece from machining or manufacturing. So there you have it. That is the tank and uh, nice big open chimney and it's pretty nice. So to change your coil, all you would do is you would just take your coil head and from the bottom center it here, push it in, and you can see how, to get it right, you can see how the metal rim around here is cut. See that? It's sort of flat here and flat here. Well, that locks in because this is flat to accept it and this is flat. So you really can't mess up getting it in because if you have it sideways, it's not going to push down, see? So you would just center it and then give it a nice push and it gets seated in there and it feels tight. It's nice and snug. And uh, there's also a screen here. So you're not going to get a lot of juice spitting and um, it is hundred uh, percent organic cotton, uh, Japanese organic cotton. So the flavor should be good and they protect it from spit back. So that's what that's for. All right. 
And then when your airflow goes back on, that just spins on. And pretty much, unless you're changing your coil head, your base is always just gonna come off like that. Now this is cool because you're, you're, when you wanna fill your tank, you just unscrew the bottom, fill it. Or if you need to change your coil head, you can take your this out and your juice can be full and it's not gonna spill if you leave it upright and uh, you're set. So that's a pretty cool, neat design there. And you'll notice up here, there's also another chimney O-ring right there that wraps around this. And as with all these O-rings, just make sure you don't knock them out because you'll leak like crazy if that happens. So there you go. All right, so what you would do to fill, you get your four milliliters, you get your dripper bottle, you get your syringe, um, or whatever you use to fill, and you would just fill this right up to the top. And since this thread's on the outside, you can actually fill it up all the way to the rim here and uh, get it nice and full. And once you have it full, you would take this, and you can drip, I, you know, I can see the, the, the coil head. Let me show you the coil head real quick. Here's a fresh coil head, this is unused. And this is the same coil head as the previous one. Let's see if we can take a look in here. So basically what you have, what, what it looks to me is a horizontal coil. It's hard to see with this shield on here, but there's your organic cotton, there's your organic cotton, and then the coil head is horizontal. Let's see if we can take the screen off. Yes, you can. So I'll grab that. and the screen pops out. So there you go. Here's your coil head. And there's your wick. And the air comes up from the bottom with a huge open airflow design. So this is pretty sweet. All right, so let's do this. I have already filled the tank and put it back on. So once it's got juice in there, this is what it's gonna look like. And you wanna you know, close off your airflow, give it a couple primer pulls, get the juice flowing. You can even drip, um, it, even when the screen's on here if you want, you can drip some, some juice on the screen to get these uh, wicks saturated if you want. If you just let it sit in your tank for 10 or 15 minutes, it'll wick itself, and then we'll give it a, a nice vape. All right, so there you go. Let's zoom back out and I'll give you my final words and impression. All right, so you saw everything. You saw the, um, I think this, this tank is a really nice looking tank. And uh, I love the open airflow, uh, the unremovable drip tip. You know, uh, it would be more user friendly, but they wanted to do that easy swap design and uh, also make it easy to fill and have that much open uh, bottom for taking off the bottom for refilling. You know, this market's competitive, so I'd be un I'd be dishonest and disingenuous if I didn't say what, what, what I would like this tank to have that it doesn't have. And I'll do that first because there's a lot I do like. Number one, I think that even though they're going to have tests that show that this, this uh, special plastic can hold up to different juices, some people are going to complain they want glass. When people break glass, they're going to complain that they want plastic. So, you know, it's personal preference, but I was told by George from Anakin that they are going to come out with a glass version that'll be a little bit more expensive, and that will be an option, though, in the future. Um, I personally like top fill tanks. I like to leave it on my mod, fill it from the top. I think the future of Clearos is with top fill. Um, this does not have that at this moment, but I'm sure that they are hard at work developing something that does have that in the future. With that said, refilling from the bottom is super easy. It's wide open and uh, it's really awesome that you can access your coil head without draining your tank. That's a huge plus. Let's take it for a vape and talk about the flavor and talk about the vapor production. So I have this on the MVP 3.0 and um, I have it set. It's reading 0.5 ohms, 30 watts. And let's take it for a vape and see how it is. Great vapor produ production uh, for 30 watts. Let's lower it a little bit. Let's go to 23 watts. So 
So even still at 23 watts, this produces a tremendous amount of vapor, great flavor, and it's really a really good taste and a, and a cloudy vape for low wattage to save your battery life. Not a warm vape, but a flavorful one. Let's keep going. Let's go to 18. Now the flavor's dropping off a little bit, but it still produces a nice amount of vapor. Um, but let me share with you where my personal preference for where I would vape this at is. And that is higher than 30 watts. I wanna do a full thorough review. So let's chuck this thing on something a little bit more powerful. Let's put it on this uh, Heat Vape Invader Mini. And let's turn up the power. The sweet spot for me with the, these uh, sub-ohm heads, the 0.5 ohm heads, is 40 watts, okay? So let's do 40 watts on here and I'll talk about my experience. It just starts to get warm, but it's not hot. The tank stays cool because there's huge airflow openings at the bottom. It's an airy draw. Let me compare it to something else. Uh, let's compare it to let's compare it to the Arctic. So here's the Arctic with the airflow open all the way. So the airflow on the um, the iSub is more open and a more airy draw than on the Arctic. And the Arctic, as you know, has really good airflow. So let's compare it to one more tank. Let's compare it to the Freemax Star. There's a little bit of juice in there. So the airflow is just like the Star. It's the best in class. If you're a, a vapor chaser and you wanna produce a ton of vapor, the heads hold up well at 40 watts. Above 40 watts, I don't push it that high because you know you wanna make sure it wicks well. At, I would say the sweet spot's between 30 and 40. Flavor replication is as good as the best of the best when it comes to uh, pre-built you know, coil heads. I wish they had an RBA section for this. Hopefully they'll add that in the future. But at a price point that's under 20 bucks, it's a steal. It's a great looking tank. It seems durable. Um, you know, lots of choices, guys. Lots of options, lots of choices. I'll put a link below if you're interested. I'm a fan. I like it a lot. And um, it's a good tank. And the juice capacity, four milliliters, you know, spot on. No spill swap coil, Japanese organic cotton, German made uh, polycarbon, and 100% stainless steel, all for under 20 bucks with two coil heads included. It's a win. It's definitely a win, and I've really been enjoying it. So there you have it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, subscribe today. Uh, you know, I'm going to have new content regularly, and I'm always going to keep you up to date on all things vape all the time. Uh, you can also visit me online at www.thevaporchronicles.com, and there is a battle going on, and we need you to fight, and the fight really consists of you fighting for your right to vape, because if you like innovation, if you like new stuff being released all the time, it's not going to be that way in the future if you don't stand up and join us and fight. Go to www.casaa.org, that's CASA, and membership is free join today join the ranks and let me tell you something if you if you vape you should vote too because we have a voice when we stand together and when we also vote so there's a battle coming and i'm ready to fight like my life depends on it because it does thanks for watching the vapor chronicles i will see you next time Thank <laughs> you.